Hey guys, it's Ken Kaplan. We're here at the New England Motorcycle Museum with my good friend Jason Lee Blunt. How you doing, Jason? Good. I probably murdered your last name again, but it's yeah. Blunt, right? No, you did pretty good. You're from England originally, right? Yeah, that's right. You Came moved here, here in 98. When you're 16, right? Yeah. How old are you now? 37. And you've been obsessed with motorcycles your whole life? Vintage motorcycles, mainly. When you when I, when I you rolled in with this thing the other day, man, my jaw hit the floor. I was like, oh my God. I think my heart skipped the beat. This thing is so absolutely stunning. This is the... the um, uh, HL 500 Yamaha, yep. also known, known of, of, as a Ben Haber uh, replica. Yep. And uh, tell us a little bit about the bike. So, I mean, this bike was based on one of the first four strokes that raced in the uh, 500 GP series. And uh, it was based on the XT 500 bike. And basically, they put it into a Husqvarna chassis at first to give it the travel that it needed. So they took a two-stroke Husqvarna chassis yep. and took this 300-pound, overweight, underpowered four-stroke, hopped up the motor and put it in the frame. Come a little closer, so let's show the guys close up, like uh, the, the shocks and everything and the, and the, the, the attention to the detail on this thing. These are as rare as hen's teeth. I've never even seen one up close. They only made 400 of them, right? As a production. They, 278, yeah, 279. Yamaha, Yamaha took the idea and then produced 400 themselves. So Boy, I'd love to get one of my hands oh, on one of those. I bet you would, yeah. So this is a replica that you built. Tell us about the replica. It kit. is. So this is a replica that's built by Jeff Morris, and he builds the frame kits, which comes with the frame and swing arm. He custom makes the pipe. And Do a close-up on the pipe. The pipe is so sexy. I look at that pipe, I was like, damn, that thing is fucking nasty. So the first thing you look at when you see that, you think it doesn't have a muffler, but that's the muffler right there. Show them that tailpipe. It just looks like, man. Yeah. Wait till you hear this thing run. It started first kicking. It hasn't started in three months. It's basically brand new. How many hours you got on it since you built it? I've probably ridden it maybe under five hours. So the original HL500 was built uh, by Torsten Hallman and Ben Aber. It was their idea. They took this Husqvarna. Torsten was a four-time world champion, I believe. He was, yeah. And they campaigned this in the 78 and 79 European Nationals, which was, or the Grand Prix, which was much more faster and more competitive than the U.S. back then, I think, right? Absolutely. We hadn't quite become the yeah. dominant force in motocross that we, that we may be today. And the bike actually ended up doing good. Yes, didn't, didn't he actually win a moto in, in uh, Luxembourg? He did, yep. And, Fantastic. Uh, I think they finished ninth overall for the season. Yes, the he got on a podium a few times, but yeah. think about it. He was um, It was 10 years since a, two, a four stroke had even been campaigned exactly. in, in, the, uh, in the nationals overseas, yeah. and they went out and actually won on this thing. So this was the modern, the, the forerunner to the 98 YZ400. Like, this was like That's the, what gave it the predecessor. Idea to come yeah. Back, yeah. So and then we all know what Doug Henry did on that thing. He destroyed the competition yeah. on that. But uh, So they took this motor, and uh, this one here, tell us about this engine. So, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about the engine other than what I was told about it when I bought it from the guy. And he, I was told it was punched out to a 580, and it was a stroked motor. So it's a little bit more powerful than the stock XT500. The information I pulled up online about the, 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 the original replica was about 30 horse stock and they turned it into a fire breathing 50 horsepower monster. I mean, to think about it, if you're going to win a 78 national against Mako 500s and, you know, wise, you know, RM 500s and big bore Hondas and whatnot, you needed some horsepower. Yeah, you so, what you can get. Yeah. And, and this thing actually did the trick. And the suspension is one of my favorite parts about the bike. I mean, look at this swing. Look at what's close up with that banana swing arm. I mean, that is just pure moto porn. That's triple X moto porn. Yeah. Look, look at the only in shock, too. I'm an Olean's dealer. That's a $1,200 plus shock right there, uh, retail. Just stunning. Um, how did it handle? How, how was the suspension? I'm sure it must have been I mean, it was excellent. very strange to get used to at first. It felt like you were sitting on the tank, and you had to get used to the power. You almost have to uh, hit the power before you get to the turn because it's not responsive like something you would ride these like days. Like a big fuel objective beast, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't even compare to the two-stroke as far as responsiveness. A lot of torque though, right? Yeah, a lot of torque. I think what caught my eye about it was the contrast, the red and white and black. It's just like, man, it's just, just yeah. so beautiful. The tank, that's a 76 YZ125 tank, is, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, some of the color schemes were yellow and black too. I think you lost your mind temporarily and thought about selling this thing, didn't you? I hope I talked you out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, when, I, when I originally put the bike together, I think- You're not gonna buy one like this. I mean, you're not gonna find one of these for, for uh, I just do yeah. not for sale. Well, the, the thing with me is I like to ride my bikes. I don't really, you know, like just to look at them. And I kind of put this thing together thinking I was going to race it. Yeah. 
And after a couple times riding it, I, was like, right. I, I didn't want to destroy it. Jason, I'm, I'm six foot two, like two, 225, yeah. 235, depending on how much pizza I eat. Well, what do you weigh? You're a big dude. I'm six foot four, and I weigh usually around 230. 230. So you're yeah. a big guy, 6'4". You yeah. You're a CR500 build guy. Yeah, I, I do <laughs> have one of those. On yeah, I love right? that bike. We have that in common. That's something I've always yeah. loved riding the CRs. Yeah. But anyway, back to this bike. Um, the rims are just gorgeous. So gold rims. Um, YZ. Uh, is this a YZ uh, front fork on this? Yeah, I think that? that's um, an 83 YZ490 front end. Rent all bars. Um, has, all nice controls. Yeah. Stunning. The forks have the gold valve emulators in them. Wow. Um, beautiful, it's pretty beautiful. much ready to go. I agree. It is almost too nice to ride. I mean, imagine, yeah. going, imagine racing this at Southwick and scratching, scratching the tank with your yeah. knee braces. <laughs> or, or denting it. You cry yourself. Aluminum. Yeah, aluminum tank. You cry yourself yeah. to sleep, man. You'd have to have a, like a race tank. I wouldn't yeah. want to race it with that tank. It is absolutely stunning, but it sure would be fun to rip it around. Yeah. Uh, it must be a wheeling machine. So the stand too is beautiful too. Yeah, that stand. was just a, that was a street bike stand that I kind of. Uh, had these pieces made a little taller so that they would lift the rear wheel off the ground like that. Do a close-up of the frame uh, tag on the other side over here. I'll come around this side, Chris. This is a beautiful, uh, this is a replica of the original HL500. Again, they haven't made them for, since 78. Tell us about the company. So that's called GMC. It's Jeff Morris Concepts. He's in Australia. And uh, if anyone has an interest in these bikes, they'll probably know him right away because he's the guy known for building the replica kits. I think he was one of the first guys to do it, and he's so kind of... You, you assembled this whole thing from, from, from the ground up, right? So, so what happened was I got the bike from a guy that, that raced vintage, and I bought parts from for other bikes. I knew he had this bike. And oh, it was already assembled like this? Kind of. Not, not, not as nice as this is now. But I hassled him to buy the bike from him since I saw it, and he kind of held out for about five years and then hurt his cut back. Him a, cut him at a weak point? Yeah. <laughs> finally hurt his back and then decided to get rid of it. Bad and for him, but good for you. Yeah, it didn't have this pipe on it. It had the original XT pipe. That What's that modified. pipe cost? That's got to be expensive that piece. That pipe, I think by the time I had it shipped to me, it was close to, I think it was a little over 1000 What about but the frame kit? I think the frame kit goes for somewhere around 4000 Yeah, so you got, you got 5G right there between the frame and pipe. Then your swing arm, or does that, yeah. that come with the frame? The, the swing arm comes with the frame kit. But, the, I mean, the thing is, if you want one of these things, you can't just get one. You'd have to wait probably a couple of years but you know he's backed up with it and not to mention if you had all the parts to build it would take you probably 40 to 100 yeah, hours depending on how slow job. you go yep. and you know you run into little things you have to finish doesn't fit with, and you, yeah, yeah this is all custom so you got 5g right there then you got your shocks that's a 1200 purchase so we're up to 62 you got wheels uh an easy 750 800 wheels if you had the hubs yeah the tanks so definitely 7, a, rare, a rare piece that's a 500 this is 500 bucks all day long by the yeah. time i'm paying it so you're 75 then your suspension and then all the so just the parts alone to build this, if you could find them. Yeah. Exactly. Then we're, we're not even talking about the motor yet. Yeah. And we're up to 7,500. We're going to talk about the motor. So yeah. the motor, to buy an, an old tired XT, bore it, stroke it, build it, clutch, tranny, everything. Chris, you, you turn a wrench. Carburetor too. What's that? Carburetor too. That's, that's yeah. not a stock carburetor. So, yeah. So uh, Chris Chris is one of our lead mechanics here. Go ahead. Stand by the bike there, Chris. Chris, you've rebuilt these motors many times, haven't you? You don't need to rebuild these motors. <laughs> <laughs> but you've, um, Chris Kelly's one of the New England uh, um, ex expert riders that, uh, well, retired. I guess you're always an expert rider, but now he's turning wrenches here at the museum for us. But how many hours would it take to, to split the cases on this and, and uh, completely, you know, bead blast everything, make it beautiful, and completely rebuild that motor? Shooting from the hip, how many hours of labor? At least 20, 30 hours. Okay, and then you've got all the parts, right? And the, 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 you're going to drop. Uh, an engine build like this, bring this to X Pro, uh, and I've had him build engines for me. He's going to easily drop five grand. They're the premier yeah. engine shop in the area. So now you're up to twelve five. So I've did a little bit of research, and I heard if you can even find an HL five hundred, they're around twenty five thousand um, dollars. Have you have you seen any of the actual original? So, so, so that kind of money is for one of the original ones that were produced by Yamaha. Seventy eight, seventy nine. They'll those. they'll bring that much money. Yeah, easily. Have you ever seen them come up for sale? I haven't, no, but um, I was at a vintage race, and <laughs> yeah. I was telling the guy about this bike, and he said that he had one and let it go and didn't know what it was, really. And He, he was kicking off. himself in the yeah, ass after you got done him. talking to him, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he, he had since found out what they were and what they're worth, and he was, like, devastated that he ever sold the thing. So just a stunning bike. We had the racers reunion here. We had JoJo Keller this weekend. We had JoJo Keller, Jimmy Ellis, John Dow, Doug Henry, um, the best 
of New England racers of all time were here this weekend. And when they, uh, you know, every one of them, they walked down like, wow, you know, because it was right by the door here when they came down to the second floor. We're, this is the second floor of the museum. We have, it's a football field long, four stories. This is the second floor. The third floor above here is where we have the banquet area set up with a seating for 95. So, um, but this was kind of a conversation piece. We got a lot of some really cool old vintage 70s and 80s bikes here, but this thing is really unique and rare. So, um, I'd like to hear it run. Let's fire her up. So, the moment you've all been waiting for. Wait to hear this, this monster. 580 cc. He's got sneakers on too. You're a brave man. <laughs> Either that or totally insane. We're <laughs> one or the other. First kick, baby. Jason, uh, it's, a, it's a little quieter than I thought it would be. That, that, that muffler, I thought with this little tailpipe would be super loud, but it's not that bad. Yeah, well, you've got all this pipe here. They basically give you all that so that the muffler can be here, which a lot of people don't realize is the muffler, so it's not so, that bad. Hold this for one second. Yeah. The company that made the, uh, that made the motorcycle actually um, made the exhaust system for you? Yeah, they did. You have to go right through the fucking door at the end of the building. So you were saying... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a freaking fantastic bike. Thank you very much for bringing the bike down here to display at the museum and sharing it with us. And most of all, thanks for letting me ride it. But uh, what a beautiful piece, man. The workmanship on it is a top shelf. How long did it take you to build it? I've been messing around with it for three years since I bought it from that guy. Yep. I slowly got it back together. And Did you do the paint job on it? I had it powder coated by a company. The tank's powder coated? Not the tank, sorry, the oh, frame. Yep. Had the uh, frame powder coated. The tank actually was one of the things that was pretty much ready to go. You know, it, it, you know, I, I I buy and sell a lot of vintage bikes. It'd be hard to put a price on this thing because first of all, you can't even get the parts to build it. A lot of it's unobtainium, or like you said, it could take you a long time to get it. Yeah, and like, then like you could buy the frame kit. You you probably be on a very long waiting list to get it though. 
in the pipe and, and everything yeah. else, and then then taking the time to, to put the whole thing together, paint everything, and yeah, it's trying a, to ship something from Australia that big's not. Really <laughs> yeah, I'd say she's a keeper, but uh, yeah. if uh, if you ever do decide to set it like you had thought about, um, I'm sure there's no shortage of people out there in, on uh, YouTube on our channel that would uh, be glad to uh, start bidding on this bad boy. <laughs> Till that day, may it rest well in your garage and thank you very much for bringing it out here Not a problem. awesome bike awesome machine you got a bunch of other really cool bikes too i do I, I like i said i do a lot of vintage racing so i i ride all my stuff but a lot of the stuff is cool i mainly race my 79 cr 250 and yep. uh, my great bike 90 cr 500 yeah the five that's the one you can just send it on right yeah <laughs> and you, can, you always know it's going to start when yeah you and, and, and you can stay stay up with the new 450s on the whole shot yeah. anyway so Absolutely. Again, thanks for coming and uh, sharing this beautiful piece of moto history with us. And uh, it's uh, a couple weeks before Christmas. God bless America. Merry Christmas, everybody.